What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Home Built Workshop. Today we're going to build this cool little shaker inspired wall shelf. So I have always been a fan of pieces done in the shaker style. I like the clean and simple look that the pieces have, and that's exactly what I want to try to bring into this shelf. I have a very specific use in my house where this shelf's going to live, so I'm building it to my specific needs. But this is a project that you can definitely change and modify to fit whatever your needs are. Now to build this, I'm going to use some very special to me quarter sawn white oak. This white oak was milled from my grandpa's farm. I'm really happy and excited to be able to use wood from my grandpa's property because I also know that he was a fan of this style because he made many projects that were in this style as well. So let's jump right in and get this thing built. My first order of business is going to be to prepare this stock. I'll do that by planing it down and then jointing one edge on the jointer. So right off the planer, these boards cleaned up really nice. There's a few knots and things and I'm okay with, but there's a few cracks and splits in a couple of these boards. I don't wanna just fill it with epoxy. I'm gonna trim this down on the table saw so that I can glue it back together to get the width that I need for the top. And while the saw's fired up, I'm gonna cut everything else now as well. Am I the only one that really likes the smell of white oak? While the top's drying, I'll start working on the sides. So on these two side pieces, I want to cut a profile on them and I want those profiles to be exactly the same. To do that, I'm going to use some double-sided tape and stick the two pieces together. Another advantage of sticking them together like this is there's some bad spots on either side and by doing it this way, I'm going to be able to cut around to those bad spots and eliminate them. A few layout lines and the old roll of tape for the curve trick, and I'll have my layout for the side pieces done in no time. Now I can lay out and cut a mortise that'll accept the back piece. And I'll clean up that cut with a chisel. Cool. So now that I've got the side pieces separated from each other, really it worked out quite well. There were several spots where I thought I was going to have to fill, but there's really only one. So instead of mixing up some epoxy because it's only a tiny bit, I'm just going to put some CA glue in there and let it dry. I'll just mash a little bit of sawdust down in there to become kind of a filler. So just in case you're wondering why I want to let the CA glue dry naturally, well, if you've ever used CA glue and activator, sometimes if you have a lot of CA glue in one spot, when you hit it with the activator, it tends to foam up and bubble, and then you get a really nasty surface that maybe you have to fill again. But if you just let it dry naturally, you won't get that bubbling and foaming, and you have a better chance of getting a completely filled joint. With the top out of the clamps, now I can remove the squeeze out with a sharpened scraper. And then I'll cut it down to size on the crosscut sled. I'll also cut down the center support at the same time. 
That was kind of crazy. See that little piece fly around? That's why you wear safety glasses. You never know where it's gonna go. After drilling the holes for the shaker pegs, I decided to add a chamfer around the front edge of the top. This softened the edge and I think gives it a nice subtle look. Now I'm almost ready to glue this thing up. I'm really liking how this is coming along. Now I'm gonna just use some masking tape and kind of lay out where I'm gonna put my glue when I attach the top. Now I'm gonna just glue the top on and then I'll reinforce that with some dowels. Before I apply any glue though, I want to pre-drill the holes for the dowels. It's going to be a lot easier to do this step now while I can fit it on the drill press. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, we are square. Nice. Now using that same quarter inch Forstner bit, I'll drill through the pre-existing hole and into the top of the bracket. Now I've got the side pieces reinforced with the dowels. I'm gonna get this back support glued into place. Up until now, I've just been using it to help keep things in alignment, but now I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing glued in. All right, do you guys use your fingers for your glue like all the time or do you use a brush? I mentioned before, somebody told me that you shouldn't use your finger because you risk getting some oils from your finger in the glue. I never had that an issue. Have you guys ever heard that? I'm not saying it's not true. I'm, I just never heard that. I only heard that once. Check my overhang. Should be equal on both sides. Adjust if necessary. Now that this back piece has had a little bit of time to dry, it can take the clamps off and we'll drill that and install some dowels and reinforce that as well. Probably not necessary here, but I want to do it anyway. With everything glued into place, now I can begin the process of sanding. I'll do what I can with a random orbit sander, but the majority of this, good old hand sanding. For the finish, I'm going to apply a couple of coats of Danish oil. Plain Danish oil on top of white oak has got to be one of my all-time favorite colors. Just a natural wood, man I love it. The Danish oil took just a little bit longer to dry because, well, I got a little bit carried away with the application. Oh. But now that it is dry, there it is. I am super happy with the way this thing came out. I really do like the simple look and the functionality of a piece like this, and this thing is gonna work out awesome. So thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section what your thoughts are on this project. And don't forget, there's a bunch of links and stuff in the video description. So guys, 
Thank you again. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.